Hi, everybody, and welcome to 32Soft's final webinar of 2018. I'm Denise, your host, and with me to present is QAD and MRP expert. As soon as the replay of this session is available, I will follow up with our Encore email. It will include a link to the replay, all of today's questions and answers. And now I will hand off to our educator extraordinaire, Don, if you are ready. Today we want to uh, talk about capacity in uh, QAD. Uh, the agenda for today, we're going to uh, try and define capacity. We'll talk about lead time. We'll talk about some capacity calculations that are used by QAD. Talk about some measures of capacity, uh, utilization, efficiency, and productivity. We'll talk about rated and demonstrated capacity. We'll look at scheduling, which is how QAD actually does the CRP calculation. We'll talk about a little bit about uh, infinite and finite loading, and then look at the specific uh, menus within QAD that uh, help us with capacity planning and then we'll talk about some uh, advantages and limitations of uh, using CRP. There's an old axiom in uh, the world of APEX that uh, goes, a plan that exceeds capacity will not get built and will build inventory. In other words, you could do the best job of scheduling and setting priorities in your manufacturing process, but if you don't understand and provide for adequate capacity, all is for naught. So we're going to talk about capacity. So what is capacity? Capacity is the amount of work that can be done in a period of time. It's usually stated in standard hours, and you can do capacity planning at uh, several levels within the closed loop system. If you look at the closed loop system, this uh, comes back from our MRP uh, webinar back in uh, June. You can see here on the left, we've got the production planning, uh, master scheduling material requirements planning and production activity levels of the ERP2 closed loop system. And then uh, we'll talk about rough cut capacity planning, which is the uh, capacity tool for master scheduling. Then we'll talk about capacity planning and input output uh, scheduling. So as you go down the uh, levels in the closed loop system, uh, you can see that the level of granulation uh, increases. So at uh, resource requirements planning, we're just talking about the uh, product families and product groups. Then down at rough cut capacity planning, that's the actual master production schedule, CRP, and then uh, input output control and dispatching. Uh, if you go up in terms of uh, time periods, you can see that we're scheduling almost on an hourly basis at the near term. And then as we get out into uh, the higher levels of the closed loop system with rough cut capacity planning, uh, we're talking about months or uh, even quarters of uh, estimation of capacity. So capacity planning occurs at each level in this uh, ERP system, and we've got to do both. We've got to do both planning and controlling. Planning is basically determining the resources we need to meet the priority plan. As far as controlling, that's monitoring the output, comparing the plan, and taking corrective action, or what we might uh, term as feedback. <clears throat> as we go about defining the system specifications for uh, our capacity planning process, uh, we've got a few co choices that our organization needs to make, both in terms of defining capacity and load. So at each level in the closed loop system, we need to define both the units of measure and the units of measure for load and capacity. So we want to make sure that we're talking apples to apples in terms of these units of measure, whether it's uh, labor hours or square footage or uh, units of uh, warehouse space. 
the horizons, as we talked about just a, a second ago, in the near near term, uh, it's more granulated. So at the input output control, we're actually at the router sequences of the work orders out on the shop floor, whereas at rough cut capacity planning, uh, we're all the way up at uh, product groups and levels. So you need to define these at each level, the resource, the departments, the work centers, and uh, you need to define the routers that are going to define the sequence of events that are going to be planned for your capacity plan. Uh, we'll look at rough cut capacity planning just as an example. Now, rough cut capacity planning is the uh, tool that we use at the master schedule level, but uh, the same kinds of concepts apply at the resource uh, requirements level or at the group or family level. So this converts the master production schedule into the impact on key resources. And I said we could do that for labor, uh, equipment, cash, inventory, several different units of measure that we can use to estimate this capacity requirements. So it's really a, a fairly simple process. Uh, I'll use a spreadsheet example just to kind of give you the idea. But this is uh, exactly what uh, QAD does in the background uh, to calculate the capacity requirements for uh, each level in the ERP. Uh, first of all, you identify and quantify the key resource. So you define uh, the resources that you're going to use. Develop a bill of resource. Now, we know what a bill of uh, material is. A bill of resource just says for this product family or this uh, end item, uh, this NMI is going to use 10 hours of uh, labor or $10,000 worth of cash, however you want to do that. Then you extend the bill of resource by the master production schedule, summarize at the rough cut capacity planning by key resource, compare to available, and uh, then simulate the impact on uh, your MPS. So if we looked at it from a simple uh, spreadsheet point of view, here we've got Part number one, two, three, four, five, six, and part number six, five, four, three, two, one. Uh, I've got 173 hours of uh, labor available. And for each bill of research for one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got work center one, two, three, four with these hours, and then one, two, three, four for the part number six, five, four, three, two, one, and a master production schedule for each part number. So the calculation of rectup capacity planning simply says that I'm going to multiply the 25 times 10. I'm going to 250 hours of uh, load. Then I'm going to go to my next period. I'm going to calculate 500. Then I can do the same for part number 654321. I've got 900. Uh, here I've got 1216. And what I do now is I can add those up, divide by that simple 173 hours per man a month. And this says that uh, for each month out in the future, I'm going to need 10.8 or 11 people, 13, 13. Uh, then it goes up to uh, almost 19 for periods uh, April and May. So it's a very simple uh, process to extrapolate your master production schedule or your rough cut capacity plan into man hours. You could substitute this for cash, for square footage, however you want to do. But that's a, a very simple process to estimate your uh, man hours. Now, in order to do this, we need to uh, have a calendar in uh, QAD. I want all of you to go into 36.2.5 and uh, create your uh, calendar, also your holiday uh, schedule so that QAD knows exactly when you're going to work. Uh, the 21.1 is where you define these resource uh, keys. So here you can see I've got a resource that I've called cart uh, and you can go in and define uh, the capacity per day for that. Uh, in departments in 14.1, uh, here this load capacity or labor capacity 
is the value that uh, QED is going to use for the uh, capacity requirements planning at the department level. Uh, we've got the work center. The work center is made up of uh, the work center identification. I noticed on the registration that uh, a number of people don't even have work centers defined. Uh, work centers are one of the key elements of capacity requirements planning, so you need to define the work centers. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, utilization and efficiency. And uh, in QAD, you can see that 14 to 5 is where we define these work centers. So here you've got the work center to the description, which department it is uh, associated with, uh, queue times, wait times, we'll talk about those in a little bit, uh, and then the setup and run rates for uh, each one of your work centers. Then you need to define your routers, and the router is simply the sequence of uh, activities that are required to uh, make or complete a particular uh, item or family group. So it consists of a sequence of operations, a work center where it's going to be performed standard hours, description. Uh, if you've got outside processing, you can uh, do that. And uh, the ones here that we've got asterisk are what we need to do for CRP. Uh, if you do the routing maintenance in QAD 14.13.1, here you can see we've got our router code, uh, we've got our operation, uh, then what work center is going to be done, uh, queue time and wait time, and then setup and run time, move time. We'll talk about those when we talk about the five elements of uh, manufacturing lead time. So you define your routers, and then <clears throat> a little discussion about uh, lead times. Lead times are the amount of time required to manufacture or process an item. Uh, in MRP, in 14.1.4.7, uh, it's basically the elapsed time between uh, when you need to issue the replacement order and when it is received into stock. For scheduling, as we'll uh, talk about later, uh, that is the routing file and the work center file. If you look at the elements of lead time, first we have uh, the amount of time we need for paperwork. That's the time to release the work order. And then if you send it to the stock room to be picked, that's uh, your pick time. That's what the guys in the warehouse are going to uh, take to actually do the preparation. Then Q is the amount of time ahead of an operation that the work order sits waiting to be worked on. This is, uh, as we'll see, a large element of manufacturing lead time. Then there's the setup, preparing the uh, particular operation for the uh, processing through that operation at that work center. Then the run time, which is the time performing the operation, normally the runtime is stated by the router time times the work order quantity, and that will give you the title time to perform the operation. And then the uh, work order will sit at the work center waiting to be moved to uh, the next operation or work center for the move time. Uh, these five elements, queue, setup, run, wait, and move, are the five elements that are going to be used by operation scheduling and the CRP calculation to arrive at your uh, total time through this particular uh, work center. Uh, you can look at the operation lead times as the setup and run time, and then the interoperation lead times as queue, uh, wait, and move. The uh, interoperation lead times uh, are unproductive. They don't add uh, value to the part, but they do impact the amount of time that it takes to produce, so therefore your manufacturing lead time. As I said, Q is typically the largest portion of uh, your manufacturing lead time, sometimes almost 
to 90% of your total manufacturing lead time. So uh, <clears throat> we want to see if we can tr control that. And we'll look at the input output control process uh, as a tool to uh, control that queue. Uh, in QAD, uh, you can see in 14.5, the work center, this is where you define the uh, default queue and wait time for your manufacturing work center. Uh, in the routing, you can override the queue and the wait time if you need to for a specific uh, routing as opposed to the work center. And then you've got your uh, setup time, your run time, and your wait time. So these are where you define these values that are going to be used by operation scheduling and CRP to calculate your load. Uh, in the item master file, you've got the uh, statements of inspection time, manufacturing lead time, and purchase lead time. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit uh, later, but uh, you want to be cautious when you do your standard cost roll or your routing roll up. You don't want to override this value with the values in your routing lead time. That uh, can cause MRP to use the uh, calculated lead time as opposed to the planner defined lead time for your MRP process. Uh, and if you override that, you could get a whole bunch of, whole bunch of uh, unneeded uh, MRP action messages. So uh, actual lead time, what is actual lead time? Well, uh, it's a function of what can you produce? What do you actually produce? That's what your actual lead time is. Uh, it's the available capacity uh, can be reduced by the mix of work orders and non-productive uh, time, muting, uh, meetings, uh, safety meetings, etc. And uh, the mix of work orders that go through the uh, process. It's also a function of that work order queue that we talked about. It's a function of the priority of both the operations and the uh, order priorities. Uh, it's the position in the queue that the particular work order or uh, item has and whether you expedite or not. Basically, it's what you say it is, what actual lead time is. Uh, if you're overstating your lead times, uh, it's going to take longer. If you're understanding lead times, uh, you're going to have everything uh, late and expedited. So the basic rule is make planned lead time as close as possible to actual lead time. So you need to measure these elements, and we'll see how we do that with input output control, and then make sure that at least on a weekly basis, you're going back into your planned lead times either in your router operation or in 1.4.7 for MRP calculations and make your planned lead times as close as possible to the actual lead time. That's going to make your MRP system uh, and scheduling process work more efficiently. Uh, there's three measures of capacity that we want to take into consideration. The first is available capacity. Available capacity is what we call theoretical or gross uh, available capacity. Rated capacity is uh, the tool that we're going to use in capacity requirements planning, and that's going to be uh, your efficiency and your utilization multiplied together to give a productivity factor, which you then multiply by your available to give you what you really expect uh, the capacity is going to be at a particular uh, work center. The demonstrated capacity is basically what your average or historical uh, capacity has been. You can uh, record that on a uh, daily, weekly, monthly period, and then compare that to your rated uh, and available capacity and make whatever adjustments you need to uh, the capacity process. So available time, your gross or theoretical. This depends on the number of machines, work orders, hours of operation, etc. So the number of machines or workers times the hours of operation. So what if we have a weekly, uh, what is the weekly available 
time at a work center for four machines that work eight hours a day for five days a week. Simple calculation is the four hours times the eight hours per week, or four machines times the eight hour a week times uh, five days a week. That means that the gross or theoretical capacity at a particular work center, in this case, is 160 hours. Uh, efficiency, let's talk about efficiency. Efficiency is the actual output rated against standard output. Uh, standard hours produced, that's actual hours earned as you uh, process work orders. Value of time produced divided by the hours actually worked times a thousand equals the efficiency. So example, if a uh, work order is usually 100 hours per week and produces 110 hours, then that means that the efficiency is 110 divided by 100 equals 110% efficiency. So in this particular example, you're 100% efficient. Uh, QAD gives you this report in efficiency by work center report. So you can go look at uh, the particular work center and uh, see what QAD is calculating. Utilization are the hours worked divided by the hours scheduled to be worked. So if you do the simple calculation where hours scheduled are 80, we actually worked 70. The utilization is the 70 hours divided by the 80. That'll give us an 87.5% uh, efficiency. And again, here in uh, QED 1620-13-8, Work Center uh, Utilization Report, this will give you the utilization for each uh, one of your work orders. So here's a simple uh, productivity calculation. And uh, you can see that uh, operator 20 spent uh, eight hours yesterday uh, setting the machine. Today, he charged four hours to complete the setup. During the same uh, setup time frame, he spent 30 hours at a safety meeting. At the end, he completed 1,500 pieces. So the question is, how many hours are required to produce an order for 200 or 2,000 pieces? If we look at uh, the efficiency, it's the uh, <coughs> 1,500 hours divided by the 500s that uh, it should take in terms of run and setup. 17 hours divided by the 15.5 says we've got about 110% efficiency. Utilization. If I take the 15.5 and uh, look at the uh, two hours that, or two days we're supposed to work, the efficiency is 97%. If I multiply those two together, I get the productivity factor. I can then multiply the productivity factor times the 2,000, and that says that I'm going to uh, take 18 point or 16.87 hours to produce the next 2,000 uh, pieces of this particular part number. So that's how we would calculate uh, the productivity. Uh, demonstrated capacity is the proven capacity calculated from actual performance. So here's an example. If we actually worked 110, 140, 120, 130 hours, and we would simply uh, calculate the demonstrated capacity as those four values divided by four. So the demonstrated capacity would be 125 hours, standard hours per week. So this demonstrated capacity can then be used to uh, look at both the uh, available capacity and rated capacity to make sure that they're uh, in line. Here's rated capacity. If we take that efficiency and utilization factor, the available time is the uh, three machines times eight hours times five days a week says we're going to uh, work 125 hours, or that's what's going to be available. The rated capacity is the 125 times the 75% utilization times 110% efficiency, says that we have 99% standard hours that are going to be used as our rated calculation. Now, let's look at load. <clears throat> That's going to be the amount of work placed on this particular work center. And it's uh, we can look at it both in terms of infinite and finite load. Uh, 
Uh, infinite load is the calculation of capacity required regardless of capacity available to perform the, per to perform the work. The purpose is to compare the capacity requirements to release and MRP planned orders against the planned capacity, identify over and under loads, and then uh, provide a basis to level that load. Uh, infinite loading is uh, backward schedule from MRP to establish the start date for each operation, load the standard hours. The update, you deduct the standard hours uh, by work order of standard hours produced, and we'll look at that in just a second, and then add the standard hours and time and work order and time period as it is planned or rescheduled for MRP. If you look at infinite loading, infinite loading is uh, the concept of assigning no more work into a work order than the work center can be expected to execute. And the purpose is to schedule and load each work center on the basis of order priority revision in order to level each uh, job and the job basis. First of all, you establish the planned available. You sequence the work orders in, in uh, your priority sequence. You load the standard hours up to the work center's planned available capacity. And then as planned uh, available capacity is consumed in one period, work orders are then scheduled into future work orders. To update it, to start over daily, recalculate the pro uh, priorities, reload from above, do it hourly if required, and use the date and any manufacturing uh, override you might have and the latest uh, due date calculation from MRP. So, if we want to look at uh, finite uh, or infinite loading, uh, we're going to use a scheduling technique. And that scheduling technique has some ob objectives to meet order require dates, determine planned order start dates and end dates, establish operational priorities, do some uh, short range load projections, develop this input output control that we'll talk about, and then uh, hopefully minimize the job lateness and any chaos that might exist out on the floor. Uh, we looked at uh, 36 uh, to, uh, 2 to 5. You got to de uh, define your work order calendar in uh, QAD. And uh, then we defined the queue setup, run, wait, and move in terms of our routers and our particular work centers. And now uh, we're going to schedule. And that is to determine when the orders should be started and completed at each work center. So you calculate the operation time, the setup and run. Then you add the uh, inner operation lead times, Q, wait, and move. And this then becomes the basis of our CRP calculations. The scheduling steps are provide the data, develop the uh, calendars and the rules, choose the scheduling method, and then do your scheduling uh, based on your setup and run time and your uh, wait and move time. You only have to perform uh, these on a one-time basis. Uh, this is performed repeatedly uh, almost on a, on a daily, if not an hourly basis. So operation sequencing is the technique we use for short-term planning of actual jobs to be run at a work center. Uh, the outputs are a set of prioritized completion dates and a simulated queue level at each work center over time. So here's a, a little example. We've got uh, a order quantity for 100. And from the route sheet, we've got operations 10 and 20 going through work center 8 and 9. You can see the setup run times and uh, the standard time for that with the uh, queue, wait, and move times for that work center eight and nine. So how do we do scheduling? Well, we take the uh, 1.5, uh, we calculate how many days it's gonna take to uh, process that. Then we can look through operation 20 
at Work Center 9. We've got uh, five hours, 0.3 hours of run, total uh, operation time of 30.5. So that's going to take about four days. And then we can simply go ahead and start uh, calculating our Q, our operation, and a projected finish date with one move. And then that will come into the Operation 20 in Work Center 9 on uh, Manufacturing Day 110. We can then calculate the uh, number of days that it's going to take to move. And then finally, we see it comes into uh, the warehouse on uh, Manufacturing Date 120. So this is exactly what uh, CRP is going to do based on the scheduling for uh, that, those particular operations. Here we can see a uh, result of uh, a load report for, in this case, uh, Work Center 0617. You see we got our rated capacity. And uh, last week, the demonstrated capacity was 292. We've got uh, about 450 hours past due. 350 due in period 1, 280, 150, 110, 190, and 90. Uh, so if we look at this, we can see that we've got a rated and demonstrated. This large pass due going out to a almost insignificant amount of load uh, out in period 6 uh, gives us an indication that uh, something is wrong with the master schedule and MRP. You can see that we've got almost 800 hours scheduled today. The past due and the 350. Uh, our rated capacity is only 336, and we only got 292 last month or last week. So we know right ahead that we've got uh, a particular problem. You can see here that our load next week is uh, 1,080, and it goes out to 1,620. So we're trying to schedule. 1620 against a rated capacity of 336. Uh, this gives us a good indication that this particular master schedule MRP process is probably uh, a little bit uh, discombobulated. So the load report gives us a good clue as to how we have the system scheduled uh, against our rated and uh, available capacity. So it looks like we're grossly overloaded in those periods. So how do we do that? Well, we use what's called input-output control. Uh, we've got new orders and open unreleased orders that are going to come into work in process. So production control controls the rate of release of new products into work in process. And we saw that the manufacturing lead time is made up of the uh, queue, setup, run, wait, and move within the manufacturing system. So the amount of capacity that we have defined is controlled by how much product we produce. And that then is the output rate for completed uh, process. So the way we control this manufacturing lead time is to control the input and the output. And that is what brings us to uh, this concept of input-output control. So how do you do input-output control? Well, first of all, you plan the input. You plan the output. You establish a hold area because you want those work orders to be held before you actually put them out into the work center with uh, picked material from the warehouse. Uh, then we're going to use MRP to recalculate uh, or reschedule. We can offload. And this allows us to monitor uh, capacity requirements and basically build credibility with the uh, shop floor foreman. So here's a uh, small, exa a short example of Work Center 20. We've got 40 hours of planned output per week. You can see, so over the uh, five periods, we plan to output 200 hours. We uh, plan to input, according to our uh, capacity or our uh, scheduling process, 
38, 32, 36, 190 hours. And we uh, then can go ahead and calculate what our planned uh, backlog is going to be. That's the 38, or 32 plus 38 minus 40 gives us a planned backlog or planned queue of uh, 30 hours at the end of period one. The actual output is the actual input minus the actual output. And that is going to give us a 34 value in the end of period one. And then we can go and we can look at how we are planning to uh, have this work center perform uh, with the planned backlog or plan, planned queue. We plan to reduce the plan uh, queue from 30 to 28. Uh, when we actually look at what we've done, we can measure what that uh, output actually is. So here in 1620.13.12, we've got our input output control report. Uh, and what we use this uh, input output capacity planning is to balance the load and capacity. So capacity is people, equipment, hours, released out load. We've got capacity uh, modifiers. We can uh, look at breaks, downtime, rework, absenteeism. Uh, the load is the released orders and planned orders plus other, or we rework if we have any, uh, maintenance if required. And so we can use this these tools to balance uh, this capacity and load so we are always producing uh, what we intend to. Both capacity and uh, load are dynamic and balancing is an ongoing effort. So the results of not doing uh, this balancing of load and capacity is that it's a complex process. You might think that uh, it's unmanageable, but if you do it on a regular basis and look at capacity and load on not just a weekly or a monthly, but every day and hourly if necessary process, we can control uh, that level of work and process out on the shop. There's several uh, alternatives to relieve overloads. We can increase capacity or we can uh, decrease capacity, uh, shift loads to other resources, etc. So these uh, tools then can be used to uh, balance that load capacity based on your scheduling and your CRP output. Uh, here's uh, just a quick look at uh, some of the menus that uh, we've uh, talked about. We've got the routing uh, maintenance. We've got uh, labor feedback because this is one of the two tools that you uh, use to relieve the uh, particular uh, completion of a work order routing operation at a work center through the uh, labor feedback. Uh, we're planning uh, another webinar uh, later, uh, probably early next year, where we're going to talk about shop floor uh, control, labor feedback, and work center. Uh, work center work order receipt actually removes the work order quantity from work in process, therefore uh, eliminating it from the load calculations that QAD is going to process. Uh, here's 24.1 which you probably need to put in your batch processing every night so that you recalculate the uh, capacity plan based on the new MRP calculations from either your regen or your net chain calculations. Uh, here's your input out control we looked at. Uh, QAD gives you these uh, work center load reports so that you can look at the balance between the uh, load and capacity. This is at the summary level. You can also do it at the detail level. Uh, you can do it at department levels or uh, you can use uh, the uh, department or resource in the 24.1 process. So this is the uh, product line resource uh, calculation, basically the same 
process as rough cut capacity planning except at the resource uh, you've defined in the system. So there's lots of advantages to doing CRP. Uh, provides uh, time phase visibility of load and capacity. Confirms that you have uh, adequate cumulative capacity. Uh, estimates lead times more uh, uh, precisely. Uh, the limitations of CRP are that uh, it applies primarily to uh, job shop. Uh, if you're re using repetitive, there are other tools, but uh, not so much capacity requirements planning. Uh, CRP only uses uh, backward scheduling, not forward scheduling, as does uh, finite scheduling. And as you can see, requires uh, extensive accuracy of data. You don't just uh, approach CRP uh, and shop floor control scheduling and the uh, balancing of load capacity unless you have a very, very good idea of what your uh, data requirements are. So if you uh, are familiar, there's the new master scheduling workbench, production scheduling workbench. Uh, it has uh, this whole process of Capacity requirements planning uh, built into it. Uh, Brent Schultz, uh, Guido have uh, done some uh, good presentations at the last uh, MUG Explore uh, West Coast User Group on the use of this master scheduling workbench. If you had any questions, uh, please let us know. But that's uh, a good tool. Uh, in uh, February, Olina is going to give an example of or a uh, webinar on the new 32SOP uh, master scheduling, uh, production scheduling workbench with visualization. So that should be interesting. Uh, if any of you are planning to upgrade, uh, be aware that the new production order functionality basically combines work orders, Kanban, advanced, repetitive, repetitive into this new production order functionality, but the CRP portion of that uh, still remains the same. So back to the uh, truism. If you don't plan and uh, uh, give the system its uh, necessary capacity, your plan will not get built and you will bid in for it. So MRP is important, but uh, I think capacity is actually more important than MRP. Next month, we do take a break in December. We take a holiday break, but we have January and February webinars all lined up, and we kick off the new year. Dawn helps us kick off the new year with using simulation forecasts in QAD, which, as Dawn mentioned, is followed by get a better view of production resources and schedules. Registration for both of these is open, and links can be found, registration links, can be found on our website and at the bottom of all of our communications. So as I mentioned at the beginning, I'll be getting that Encore email out to everybody that will link to the replay. If you scroll to the bottom, all links to all of our upcoming events, registration links are always available at the bottom there. Um, 32, EDU 32 is here. We have added the section to our website dedicated to sharing knowledge and insights. You can access EDU32 from any of our web pages. It's right there in the top navigation. And this is the portal page. If you scroll down, you'll see that there's a featured video and article. And then at the very bottom, more videos and more EDU32 articles. Uh, we will continue to add educational content. So we hope you will check it out and let us know what you think. Don, is there anything else we can go ahead and move to wrap up with a final thought? And um, if there's anything else you wanted to add before I do that? Uh, yeah, just just a final thought. Uh, in any ERP, uh, MRP calculation, uh, I think companies tend to spend a lot of time uh, on the MRP uh, calculations, the uh, planning uh scheduling prioritizing of materials and work orders and regrettably this whole process of capacity control through rough cut capacity planning crp uh, shop floor control input output uh is a little bit beyond 
the, uh, I won't say interest level of the organization, but uh, as we've seen, it does take a fair amount of uh, data. It, it requires an extensive amount of accuracy, discipline, and uh, understanding. So uh, I would simply counsel uh, anybody who is going to undertake this, uh, you can use the uh, PowerPoint that uh, Denise, Denise will make available to uh, give you an idea of how CRP works. If you do CRP correctly, it is a uh, wonderful tool to control the uh, lead time and accuracy of your orders out in the shop, giving the customer or more uh, accurate uh, level of uh, available for delivery. Uh, it's uh, a great tool and uh, I would urge everybody to uh, take a strong look at uh, the CRP uh, tools within QAD. So that's, that's my uh, sermon for the day. <laughs> Thanks for that, Don. Um, and yeah, anybody have any questions direct specifically for Don, of course, um, he makes himself available and he answers questions thoroughly and he is our guy, go-to guy. Um, okay, well, thank you, Don, and we'll go ahead and, and wrap this up for everybody. Uh, let's see. Planning is bringing the future into the present so that you can do something about it now. And that would be the purpose of all the details Don went through for us all today. Um, thanks very much for your time, everyone. There is a brief survey at the end, as always, and we appreciate any input uh, you might have about our webinars or upcoming, um, upcoming webinars. If there's any suggestions you'd like to make about topics you'd like to hear more about, we'd love to hear from you. On behalf of all of us at 32Soft, we wish each of you a safe and super holiday season, and we look forward to seeing you back again in 2019. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks again. Okay. Thank you much. Have a wonderful Bye -bye. day. Thank you, Don.